Hi, welcome to the Gangsplainer. I'm Jeff the Gangsplainer, and today I'm Gangsplaining the Quacks of Quedlinburg. The Quacks of Quedlinburg is a two to four player game put out by North Star Games. It's been out for about a year now, and it was in amongst the three games that the designer Wolf Game Wash had that were all up for the Spiel de Jara last year, that's 2018. I've taken a while to get to this game simply because it's been hard for me to find. I believe, now I may be wrong on this, but I believe that I picked up in the third printing run. Um, it's the first time I've actually seen it on the shelf of the game shop or any of the game shops I've gone into. So it's been a little bit tricky to find, but I now have a copy and here is the video. Quacks of Quedlinburg is a bag building game. So if you've played bag building games before, uh, like Orléans, uh, or similar types of games, you'll know that you've got a bag, you put chips in the bag, you then pull in those chips out and they tell you what you can do. You are trying to fill up a pot um, to create a potion, I guess. It doesn't really matter too much what the thing is that you're trying to create, but I guess it's a potion. If you go over seven of the white chips, now you start the bag with um, a three, two twos, and four ones. Partway through the game, you'll get one more one in there. Which means, right at the beginning, you're very likely to go over the seven. Because there's like two other chips in your bag other than those ones. But as the game goes on, it gets easier and easier to go further and further and build on more and more and more into the potion. What each thing that you're putting into the potion does is slightly different. Now, this is where this game gets really interesting. The, the, the base game is you... You have all these potions going in and each of them does stuff, but you can flip those tiles over and they do something different. Or you can go to a totally separate set of tiles or you can flip them over. So there's like four different things that each of those potions could do or each setup could do. Plus your main board, you can play on one side or the other side and there's different things that they can do. I really appreciate that in the game because in the current climate is we will play a game once or twice and go, oh yeah, okay, I've got a feel for it and move on to the next game. There's this whole thing of, okay, I can play it once or twice and get a feel for it, but if I want to play a different game, I can just flip some stuff over and suddenly I'm playing a different game. Yes, it's the same mechanism, but it's a different game. It's got a different rule set behind it in terms of how to manipulate your bag the best you can. The other really interesting aspect of this game is this explosion idea. I know I didn't really mention it before, but the once you get past seven of these white... Um, chips that come out of your bag, if you go over seven on them, your potion explodes. So you need to stop building at that point. But that doesn't put you out of the round. What it means is that there's a die that gets rolled at the end of each round. So whoever has managed to build the furthest into their potion without exploding will roll the die and they get a bonus. Everyone will get to do everything until we get to the point where the number that you get up to will give you points and will give you the ability to purchase more chits to go into your bag. Now, if your potion has exploded, you have the choice of points or chits. And allowing your potion to explode just so you can get some more chits in the bag isn't necessarily the worst idea in the world. In fact, the first game of this I had, I played with people who had played it before, and they were teaching it to me, and they were very, um, I'm not going to tell you how to play this game. I'm not going to tell you if it's a good idea or not a good idea to let your potion explode at the beginning. Um, That's a tough one. The, sometimes it's worthwhile actually just allowing your potion to explode so that you can gain some higher value chits for a better game later on, rather than holding back in order for you to get some points. Because this game has an inbuilt catch-up mechanism of rat's tail. The rat's tail catch-up mechanism, I'm not 100% sure that I like personally. This is me personally. So some people really appreciate that. Some people find that oh, having that catch-up mechanism actually allows someone to catch up. So if you've gone not great in the first couple of rounds, you're actually able to catch up with what's happening where everyone else is up to within a couple of rounds. But the first game, I really didn't like it. I really didn't appreciate this rat tail thing because I was sitting ahead and I found that these guys were, were deliberately sitting at the back so I could get the rat tails and push further into the potions and therefore, therefore get higher values of cheats coming into the bag to be able to take over later on. Uh, there's a real push and pull on it. I'm not 100% sure that I like it. I, I understand it. I appreciate it. I appreciate that it's there, but there's, there's a point. 
I guess it's that point of games that are similar to Food Chain Magnate where if, you're do, if you do something wrong in that first couple of turns in Food Chain Magnate, you're pretty much out of the game. You're not going to be able to catch up. You have to be getting stuff right all the time. Quacks of Quedlinburg, it takes that out of the game so that if you do something wrong in the first couple of rounds or if you don't quite get the score in the first couple of rounds, it actually doesn't matter as much because it's got this catch-up mechanism. And so it's possible to balance the way you're playing the game to actually go after that catch-up mechanism to use that to your advantage to push further forward. It's a really intricate little conundrum, I guess. If you know the game, you've got a much better chance at doing really well at it because you can kind of, you can get the idea of the mathing on it, the the whole, okay, if I allow the points to go away, because there's only a couple of points in the early stages, I don't get those points, but I'm going to get higher valued stuff into my bag for later. That's probably a better idea. And, uh, there's something about it doesn't quite sit right with me. I do like the game, don't misunderstand me, I do like the game, but there's this little mechanism, it's... I need to get my head around it. I don't 100% appreciate it, simply because you can choose to be sitting in the back just so you get the benefits which will allow you to jet forward further into the game. Now, having said all that, there's a point where the level of points is actually worth seven, eight, kind of that level points, and that's going to do this to the gap. It's really hard. Once that gap has happened, it's really hard to come from the back and close it, which I'm sure is why this rat's tail idea is in the game, this whole catch-up mechanism. It's there to stop that from happening early on. There's a balance. I guess that's really what it all comes down to, is balancing out what's going to happen. Uh, I really like this game because the way of the bag building is everyone will actually do the thing at the same time to build through. And then it's just on the actual scoring, the running through of who's got the furthest into the pot and all that type of stuff that's going to happen um, as a group thing, but there's no real turn taking, so you're not slowed down. So you could play a two player game in pretty much the same amount of time it takes to play a four player game. I really appreciate that out of games, and it's really hard to find a mechanism that does that, but I really do like that and I appreciate it. I'm so thankful for that to be there because I've got so many games where if you're playing four player, it's going to take twice as long as if you're playing with a two player game. Look, I think that I've said enough about this game. Please go ahead and watch my Gamesplain game explanation to get a feel for how the Quacks of Quedlinburg actually runs and how it actually works. If you have any comments or suggestions, please write them below. If you have any games that you would like to be Gamesplained, please shoot me an email at thegamesplainer at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at thegamesplainer to keep up to date with the games I'm playing. Subscribe to my videos to keep up to date with the games that I'm Gamesplaining. And until next time, enjoy gaming.